Hello, I'm out in a park with my family, or what I think the family is because I don't have a family, so I'm here with a, a hoover that's my child and a spoon that I sleep with every night. Paul, are you pretending to have a family again? I'm 33 years old and entirely alone. Have you been playing any board games with your family? No, hi, Quins. I haven't because my family find board games too complicated. Did you know there are board games just for families now? But aren't they bad that's and too simple? No, sorry. That's what I used to think. But then one day I changed my tune and I realised that board games for families are A-OK -okay by my book. No, the truth is that family board games need to be tougher and meaner than any other board game out there. They need to be able to grip your attention immediately. They need to be able to stand up to the worst of all criticisms. They need to be able to, uh, to be incredibly accessible, very simple. They need to be cheap. They need to be good looking. They are more demanding than any other field of game. And frankly, that don't lick that, huh? Did she, uh, I could do what I like. She's my wife. Uh, she had a bit of Nutella on her. I, 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 I think it was Nutella. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> oh, Paul, are you okay? <coughs> Paul, <coughs> you've been poisoned by your own wife? Augustus then. Okay, so every year in board gaming there is a festival called Spiel which takes place in Essen in Germany and it's like the Cannes Film Festival of board gaming because like Cannes it's kind of the pinnacle of board gaming culture but also not really the pinnacle of anyone's culture. To qualify for an award in Cannes you have to submit your film on actual film and Essen has a similarly kind of backwards rule which is that for your game to qualify for the prestigious Spiel the Jahres Award which will sell, skyrocket your sales from 5,000 copies to 500,000 copies as you appear in supermarkets across Germany you have to make a game that anybody can play which is very, very tricky. The three games that uh, qualified for the award this year were Hanabi, a game of building firework displays where everyone holds their cards backwards. We're going to be looking at that soon. That actually won. A game called Quicks, and we don't judge board games by their cover here at Shut Up and Sit Down, but judging from Quicks' cover, it was shit. And the third game was Augustus, okay? A game where players have to dispatch legions to various countries and senators to claim them for the Emperor Augustus. First player to get seven objectives ends the game, but doesn't necessarily win it. So how do you claim an objective for Emperor August Us? Well, it's very simple. Ignore this stuff here right now. What you'll be focused on, first of all, is just three objectives that sit in front of you. And each of these objectives will have a load of, of wee sort of symbols down the side. It's very important because each player will also have seven Roman lesions. And what you need to do to claim an objective is place a lesion on every single symbol. It's really very simple. What happens every turn is one player will have the black bag of Roman destiny in their sinful palm and they'll be teasing forth tokens and those tokens will represent things like a shield, there's a shield, or they'll represent uh, a, 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 an, an animal gif or a car or other ancient Roman things. And you'll look at your objectives and you'll go, oh, there's, there's, there's an animal gif and you'll place a lesion on that, and once you place lesions on all of an objective, the objective is your objective and you claw towards it. It's really, if you like, uh, invading a province and just filling the province with troops until you conquer it, or uh, invading a senator and filling the senator with men until you've conquered him. Would you call it, like, Roman bingo? Yes. And very rapidly this starts getting quite tricky because when you run out of seven legions you're left with the option of where to shuffle them around and you spend a lot of time looking at this guide as to how rare all the different sigils are. And then when you actually score an objective, several kind of awesome things happen. First off, you have to declare Ave Caesar, uh, which is obviously awesome. Uh, then every objective gives you a special power. So Cyprus lets you teleport soldiers around when you conquer it, just like uh, in real life. Uh, Pontius, when you conquer that, all your cars will count as catting poles. And uh, Valerius Manlius Panzer just has a really funny name. But we're just getting started. Okay, hang on, hang on, I have to come over to the other owl. Alright, so hi, 
this is the other end of the table where you're going to be collecting your prizes for completing objectives, all right? If you collect three rare North African objectives, you can claim this. If you've got more provinces than anyone else that produce gold, you could claim that. And then, oh, these numbered ones are my favorite. If it's your second objective, you could claim this number two. If it's the sixth objective just before the game ends, you could claim this 10.1. Finally, you pick up which of these five objectives on display you're gonna go for next, allowing you to thread a strategy together, depending on all these different prizes the objectives have. So you're constantly choosing and changing your priorities, completing your cards as fast as you can so you can steal more cards from the middle that other players might want, so you can throw a spanner in their public works, or maybe you're trying to complete this card that allows you to put a lesion immediately on another card and you could maybe complete that card straight away and you've changed your cards. And but you know the thing is is that we're winning, we're talking about Augustus and winning but that's not the reason it won Spiel the Yaris. Let's focus on the small details. Okay first of all it's the box art and the box is just really nice look. The Romans on the box are doing what you're doing in the game. They're putting little legions down. Is that the lighthouse at Alexandria? Yes! Very well spotted, Paul. Next up, we've got the manual. And the manual is really lovely. I love when board games do this. Look, it's a big... It's as if you're, as if you're assembling IKEA furniture. Stop it! You've got all the different things and annotations that shows what they all do. Makes it so anyone can do it. And third off, on the different places you can conquer, Gold and wheat are sometimes displayed and they're important, but everything else is just cosmetic. You can find out that Safini in Turkey is famous for making carpets, or, uh, or this place makes fish and stone, and this place is good for cotton or wool. The art is just so nice throughout. Did you say the art was nice? Do you not think it looks a bit weird? Like, you've got this weird-looking Emperor Palpatine. Em Emperor Palpatine Dude. is actually based on a real Roman, or, so I don't know what you're talking about. Gandalf. Okay, Gandalf. He, that's clearly... Uh, or a man called Cursor. Uh, that, well, he invented the computer cursor, obviously. Or, uh, so just some horses that are joined at the bum. Okay, that or, is rude and uh, inappropriate. Eyebrows! Wow, that, but Romans actually had bigger eyebrows, genetically. That's, uh, just, just a funny hat. That man's dead. Uh, he's not dead. Uh, he that's is... Brian Cox. <laughs> Help. Uh, a man called Menus. Right, Menus also uh, not... Inferior Germany. Um, Superior Armenia. Uh, uh, Faustus Sergius Caud... I think Caudax just means old man. Are you still Santa, just making fun of... Are you just making fun of anything now? Lo the longest, longest. Right. Longest. Do you reckon that's that why That man's his... called Quinns. That's not funny. It's not funny! So the next thing to explain about Augustus is... What is the next thing to explain? Have we covered everything? Well, yeah. I mean, it's quite, it's quite simple. That's probably it. Well, what do you want to do now, then? I don't know. Ooh, family things. I, no, I don't want to. I have a headache. Oh, come on. I don't want to be a family anymore. It's rubbish. Fine. Yeah, okay. So what are your conclusions on Augustus then? Well, August us is very easy to demonstrate. It's easy to explain to get people into. There's not a lot of complication in the rules, but it does engage you. It does have you putting your chin in your palm like that, thinking hard about what your next move is. Even though the moves are just putting a lesion here or putting a lesion there. Yeah. What? Do you, what, I don't understand. Do you not, do you object? You don't, are you, are you going to do like a fancy I am objecting complicated thing? No! First off, I'm not convinced that Augustus actually succeeds at being Augustus. The thing, the game, the game's idea, all these beautiful wooden pieces, this doesn't seem to be the game, okay? When someone calls shield and you have to decide where to put 
a guy in Wetford to peel other guys off other places. That doesn't seem to be as important towards victory as simply finding out which objective will win you the most points. And that's the worst kind of game, that's just mathematics. Problem number two, all right? A really good family game, you should spend maybe five minutes building a coliseum of rules and then attacking each other. Augustus doesn't quite function like that because its game is mostly hidden in this deck. Cards are gonna show up and you're not gonna realize, say, how common the attacking cards are or whether the card you're basing your strategy on is even gonna show up. This isn't ideal. It makes the game a bit more based on luck than I'd like. And third of all, Augustus is okay. Paul likes it more than I do, but I think he'd agree with that. I had to wade into the Shop and Sit Down comments recently when people were defending the aggressively average Lords of Waterdeep because, yeah, it's a family game that's not that much fun, but anyone can not have much fun with it. No, no, a really good family game is as good as any other game in the world. It's just simpler, which makes it harder to design, but you shouldn't have to sacrifice some of your evening's entertainment because you want everyone to enjoy it. No, you want to be having fun with your family. Ooh, truth okay. plain lands. Okay. So what would you recommend instead then? Uh, I, mean, I know. Don't say Kingdom Builder because that is the textbook definition of quite nice. So if you want an entirely average game for your family, I really like Kingdom Builder. It's a game that's like Augustus in that it's incredibly simple, anyone can play it, but it has even more wood, and it'll let you assemble a wonderful little village, a kingdom, on your table. A game that doesn't have as and much wood, because why would you want all of the wood? Is Libertalia, which has cards instead, and it's actually very simple, but very, very clever. You all play pirates, and you're trying to steal treasure from under the noses of all the other pirates by playing cards that run faster or slower, affect everybody well, else's hey, cards. If you want a card game, game, but it's simple. Well, what about one that's simple. even simpler, even cheaper, and even more fun than Augustus? Love Letter has just 16 cards, comes in this adorable little pouch, and uh, it's just a kind of bluffy poker game, but it's wonderful. And it's from Japan, so, you know, it's like a cultural exchange, well, and that's no, better no, than no, Augustus. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If you want simple, just, just play Jungle Speak, because oh it's really my simple, God. and it's got cards, but it's like, it's fast, and it's, 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 it's hectic, and all you need to do is match cards, and when the cards match, you just grab the token in the middle. But if, you want, simple is if that? you want hectic, really, really simple. If you want hectic, yeah. our favourite hectic game it's not so fun. I'll just is, leave it there. is Pictomania. There. Pictomania is, is a game of drawing, like Pictionary, except everyone's drawing at the same time. And the words are incredibly difficult, so it's just totally absurd. It's absolutely our favourite family game. Or, or, or Skull, Skull and Roses, Skull and Roses which is, is our favourite game. It's just massively simple, of sort of a card game, but not because they're all beer mats, and you're all bluffing about how many like you're holding or that you put down. It's really, really simple, but actually quite hard to get right. I it's think really about people. I think we've proved the point. Though. It's probably about there are probably people in your family, so this is good. It's good for if we find it this people. easy to recommend things that aren't Augustus. Probably people shouldn't buy Augustus. <laughs> well, it's it's quite good. I put it in the same pile of. But it's like, you Thanks. don't feed your family family food and make them watch family movies, you just feed them good food and make them watch good movies, so why would you give them a family game? Am I supposed to feed my family? I know what we can do, we can teach my family all of these games. Okay! Yeah! Alright, so here are your cards. Henry, you'll want to be really careful, a lot of the cards are very similar, but you can only grab the totem when there's an exact match, alright? Okay. I mean, sorry, Paul, this is... What? I mean, this is funny and everything, but, I mean, you know it's just a hoover. Oh yeah, no, it, it is just a hoover, but he's inside. 